mode. Hi, um, thanks for coming to the webinar today. Um, I'm Matt Cedarberg, the CEO and co-founder of T-Splines Inc. Um, the co-host today is Fernando Rentes, a 3D visual artist and V-Ray trainer. And um, thanks for taking part of your day today to, um, to listen as we talk about how to change your approach to design with T-Splines for Rhino and V-Ray for Rhino. Um, so let's just take a look at the agenda uh, for the webinar. Um, first of all, let's give a brief introduction of both the T-Splines plugin and the V-Ray plugin for Rhino. Uh, then the bulk of the webinar will be giving a live demo to actually show how to start from scratch to design this knife uh, that you see here in the corner and model that with T-Splines and then render that using V-Ray. Um, Throughout the webinar, feel free to ask questions um, by typing in the questions box on your GoToWebinar window on your screen. And um, we will try to type back and answer questions in real time. And then we'll also make some um, time available to answer those questions live after each portion of the webinar. And uh, finally, this webinar will be recorded. So the purpose of the, of the webinar is to um, show how to use these workflows in T-Splines and V-Ray to model. And our hope is that after the webinar, you'll have um, enough understanding to be able to do that yourself. Um, but if, uh, if there's some small parts or small parts of either the modeling or the rendering that you didn't quite catch, um, don't worry about that. We are recording the webinar, and you can access this online later to, to, to watch again. Um, so we'll just go ahead and bring, break into the, uh, the overview. Um, T-Splines for Rhino uh, version 2 was released uh, just last month, and it's a plugin that can be used to create organic designs, um, edit them quickly, and then export them for manufacturing without remodeling. And V-Ray for Rhino is a high-quality photorealistic renderer. All of the images you see here on the screen were designed using T-splines. Um, some detail, in some cases, was added with just Rhino. And then um, V-Ray was used to render these. Um, so you can see some of the, if, if you design any sort of designs with organic elements um, and then need to create impressive renders, and these are products that you might want to consider. Um, I'll focus a little bit more on T-Splines now in this part of the webinar, and then Fernando will introduce V-Ray. Um, but again, the, the three main benefits that T-Splines brings is the ability to, to create smooth organic designs, edit them quickly, and then export them for manufacturing without remodeling. Um, during the webinar, we won't talk much about the final point, exporting for manufacturing. Uh, just in short, the way this is possible is that T-Splines are fully compatible with NURBS, which are the standard surface used in CAD. So any um, T-Splines model can be exported to, to NURB surfaces and then can be manufactured however any run on NURB surface can be manufactured. Um, but we focus today on just the actual creating of the organic designs and, and editing them. Um, so there's, there's two ways um, that we can kind of create an organic design. First is by um, creating the design completely in T-splines. So here's an example of this earring that was designed um, just completely in T-splines and then manufactured. Um, this is a complex surface, but uh, this is still editable. Any point can be moved without any gaps or, or sliver surfaces appearing. Um, the second way to use T-splines in design is by creating a hybrid, so creating the main organic shape of the T-spline um, in T-splines, and then converting it to NURBS and adding in the finer details, the fillets, bosses, trims, and that's a way of, of, kind of combining T-splines and NURBS, leveraging the strengths of both T-splines and Rhino to create an organic detailed shape. Um, there, there's three main workflows for creating a T-spline. Uh, the first is to start with a basic shape, so either with a primitive or from some lines, and then push and pull on the surface created until you get a complex surface. This is also known as box modeling, 
and is a popular uh, method used in, in the animation industry. And his point is bring this method into industrial design for the first time. Um, other ways of creating T-splines includes um, from input curves, so either from lofting or by skinning um, a non-rectangular network of curves to create an editable T-spline surface. And then also um, you can convert both untrimmed NURBS and OBJ or other meshes to T-splines. Um, you can learn more about all these workflows at, um, on our website. We'll just click here to, to show you the link. Um, there's a user manual available, and um, that's accessible just by, by going to the top in support and going to the Reiner user manual. And this is free, and uh, you can download this to get more detail about basically everything that we're telling you today. Um, also on our website, you can get a free trial of T-Splines, and uh, go visit our forum or, or get other, other tutorials there as well. Um, but uh, the the workflow that we'll be focusing on today in this webinar is this very first one where you start with a primitive, then push and pull on the surface to create a, a more complex model. Um, so the demo that we'll be doing is how to model this knife using T-splines. And the overall um, workflow that we'll be following is first starting with a reference image. In, our, in this case, we've, we have some, some 2D uh, curves. Uh, then create a primitive, like a box primitive, and just kind of put that near the lines, then push and pull on the control points until you fit the primitive to your reference image. Um, finally, add some more geometry to get more detail to the model, and then finally you get your final surface. Um, so with that overview of, of this box modeling process, let's um, jump right into the the demo and uh, show how to use T-splines for Rhino. Um, so here's um, the, the final model that we're creating. If we just go to shaded mode, we can see some of the detail. Um, some transitions here. This is um, two surfaces. Here's a, um, this is one T-spline surface here, the grip, and here's one other T-spline surface, the rest of the nut. Uh, we can zoom in to see some of the, the local detail that's teed off here with T, with T junctions, T points, and that's C2 smooth there. And then we can even see where we have the sharp crease here on the knife. That's perfectly sharp, C2 sharp, and then it dies off to be uh, C2 con curvature continuous smooth on the rest of the knife. Well, let's go ahead and turn off that layer and start modeling from scratch. So you can see my setup here. Um, here's just uh, Rhino 4. And then I have the T-Splines toolbar here on the side. And um, to, uh, to start off, just as we showed in the overview, when box modeling, you start with a primitive. So we have um, six T-Splines primitives. We'll start with a box primitive because that most closely uh, shows the shape of this of this knife, and then um, we'll just change here in the command line the number of faces in, uh, in some of the directions so that we have enough control points to to work with in the model. We'll also turn on symmetry because this knife is symmetrical. We'll turn on symmetry in the x-axis, and then we will uh, just go ahead and place the box. And we don't have to place this exactly. Um, how the knife will be. We just have to get it kind of close because now we'll be moving control points to get it into place. So here's a, a T-spline box. You can tell it's a smooth surface just like NURBS. Uh, the green shows the, uh, the symmetry boundary and the symmetry axis. And um, then when we decide to, when, we, when we're working with the T-spline's model, we can either work with it as the smooth surface or we can use the smooth toggle command to um, toggle it to what we call box mode. And I'll start out working in box mode because this helps me visualize and see where my faces and edges and vertices are a little bit better than the, than the smooth mode. Um, one other T-Spines feature that I'll, I'll use right now as well is the edit mode. And this can be accessed by clicking on the, the manipulator icon. But whenever the edit mode is active, you can see this heads up display in the corner of your, of your viewport. And this is something that T-Spines introduces into Rhino. 
And what it, what it gives you is first it gives you manipulators. So we have both a translate, um, uh, rotate, and scale manipulators you can use to uh, scale your objects. Also you can change uh, the selection mode. So you have object mode, vertex mode, edge mode, and face mode. And those are all different components of the T-spine that you can move around to shape your model. Um, so we'll start out by going to vertex mode and we'll use the transit manipulator. And the first thing to do is just to move these control points into position so they are um, kind of representing uh, the curvature of the model. So move that over there and the, with the transit manipulator then we can click here to go to the scale manipulator move the control points down. Um, and we'll do that, and we can do that with these control points. By dragging this disk, it will constrain the movement to a plane. Um, trans scale that down, translate. Um, translate these guys over, scale. And um, one thing that will become apparent if you're moving a lot of control points is that it, it's kind of inconvenient to need to move over here to, to toggle um, the manipulator by, by clicking on that. So there's a few things you can do. One is you can pull out this, this toolbar and just, uh, just change the, your selection um, from the toolbar. So that's, that's one thing that kind of speed up the, the process of switching between the manipulators. Um, one other thing you can do though is use hotkeys. So you can tell that when we have the edit mode on then hotkeys are enabled. We can disable or enable them by clicking this, this blue uh, text there. But by going to the T-spline's options, we can look at um, the, the hotkeys that are enabled. So we have hotkeys assigned to the manipulators, to the different uh, selection modes, um, mesh settings. You can also assign any T-spline's command to a hotkey. So we can, assign, we can assign extrude to the hotkey X and just assign that. You can also assign any Rhino command to a hotkey. So all this type the zebra command and assign that to a hotkey here. And so whenever you're in edit mode, then these hotkeys will work um, assigned to those commands. So now I'm using the hotkeys and I'll just hit the W hotkey and move this into position. And then hit the R hotkey to, uh, to scale. And then W again to move R to scale. And you can see how that helps me um, get these into position a little bit more quickly. So now I'm just using the hotkeys and, and moving the control points over here. Here's the last one. Um, okay, so now that we've kind of got these in position in, in the one view, um, the, the way to start a box modeling is to first work in one orthogonal viewport and then move to another orthogonal viewport. So now I'll move to the top view and um, we can, let's see, I'll, maybe first I'll toggle to the smooth mode so we can see how this is looking. It's kind of gradually taking shape, but obviously this, this blade of the knife needs to be a lot skinnier. So I'll toggle back to the, the whole mode and just grab these control points. And since now this, since it's symmetrical across the uh, across the y-axis, we only have to move the control points in on the one side and they'll update on the other side. So just moving these control points in um, to, uh, to make this a lot skinnier. And um, again, we'll toggle back to this, the smooth mode and see how that's kind of forming, forming our model. Um, one benefit that T-spines have that we're nervous is it's really easy to explore different um, design iterations. So, as I'm looking at this and looking at the, you know, how this model curves around here, this is very uniform and I think I'd like actually to have some tighter curvature here on the top of the, of the knife handle and then have it smoother down here. And the way to get tighter curvature with T-spines is exactly the same as with nerves and that is through positioning control points closer together. So by moving control points closer together I'll have some tighter curvature up here. So I'll work on that in the right viewport. We'll go back to, uh, to, to whole mode and um, just move these control points up, up closer to the other ones and we'll get some tighter curvature. Um, so to have this uh, stay 
uniform across the whole top of the knife. I'll move all of these control points up to the top um, with this row of control points. And then, uh, because on the handle I want some even tighter curvature up there, I'll move the second row up very close as well. And we'll just do this part here on the handle. Um, and then take a look at this in the perspective viewport. Ta hit the smooth toggle button. And uh, you can see how that, um, now I have a lot tighter curvature up here and it smooths out there on the bottom. So we can play around with that just by moving, by moving the control points. Um, let's see, so at this point, um, I think we'll probably want to go ahead and, and pull the model out so it's actually touching the uh, box mode and uh, switch over to edge mode now and just select this edge and drag this, this disk to constrain the movement to, that, to, the, uh, to the plane. Pull that out and then hit the R hop key to, uh, to scale this down. Um, and back here again, we'll stay in edge mode and just grab um, this edge and go back to, uh, to transit manipulator and pull that down. You can see with whenever we're in edit mode, we have pre-selection highlighting the T points. It's different than the, the normal right highlighting. It makes it so it's faster to select items. Um, so let's go back to the smooth mode and see how our model's looking. Um, looks like we still need to pull that out a little bit. But, but before we really um, do some more control point moving to fit the model, let's just kind of look at the general shape of the model more. Um, this, this blade, we want to, to be pretty straight and sharp. And with all the control points and edges we have here, it's, it's really kind of curved. And so that means we, we have more detail than we want. Um, one benefit that T-Spines has that's unique to T-Spines, it's not available on NURBS, is the ability to delete the local isoparms or local edges in the model. So I'm just selecting these edges, then I'll hit the delete icon, and that will just uh, delete. Oh, let's see, oh, I had the wrong select. Let me undo that. Um, let's see, undo that one more time to bring back symmetry. Let's see. Okay. Let's go back to uh, uh, smooth mode and select the edges. Okay, let's try that one more time. And delete these guys. Um, then we will also need to uh, delete these control points so that it can go back to smooth mode. So hit, hit delete one more time. And going back to smooth mode, um, we can see now we have this detail that's teeing off here, and uh, there's less detail here at the front. So that will make it so it's easier to, uh, to keep this a little bit straighter with not as much, not as much curvature there, there will have, we'll have the knife blade. Um, okay, so now that we've got the number of control points uh, correct, um, let's do a little bit more finessing of the model. It's like I undid this, so I'll go ahead and um, pull this this back out. And then um, just we can play around a little bit more with um, just the general look of the model. So we can select faces in T-Spine. So we'll go ahead and select these faces and pull those down to change the curvature. Um, select these edges, so we can pull those in, uh, pull these edges up a little bit. And, um, and we can just continue it however long we want to to, to just kind of play with the, the curvature of the model, but that's, that's looking pretty good. So now we'll come back down here to the right viewport, and in smooth mode, we will go back to the, uh, to the control points and, um, and move the control points into position so that they um, are, uh, so that we kind of tightly follow the outline of the model. Um, and with T-spines, just like in NURBS, the influence of every control point um, goes on to uh, the next two control points over. That's how the surface is able to stay smooth. So that's why as we're moving this, you can see the, the shape changing smoothly 
outside of just that control point uh, as uh, the surface kind of updates to, to stay C2 smooth. So let's see, let's move these around. And uh, this guy up. And we can. Um, one, one advantage of, of doing this with such a small number of control points is it's easy to keep the surface nice and fair. So as we're moving that, that's one thing that's being maintained. Bring that down. So let's kind of work your way across the model um, and uh, getting these control points into position. Let's kind of zoom out and, and uh, take a look to see how, see how that's looking. Um, okay, that's looking pretty good in general. Let's see, we should move this guy down. Um, one area that has a pretty high amount of curvature um, that we won't be able to achieve with just this number of control points is this, this transition right here. And in order to, to, to match that curve, we're going to need to add some more control points. So just as in before, where we deleted some edges in, in the T-spine model, T-spines also lets you add local detail. So we'll use the uh, insert edge command and just select this edge. and. Um, and just click where we want to insert that. So we'll insert that here. And so now we have some more detail. So when we go back to uh, the control points, we can move these control points up into position. And uh, now with that extra control points, we have enough detail to, to really get that curvature. OK. Um, so that's probably. It's probably good enough. We could continue to play with that, but looking here in perspective, um, that's a that's a pretty decent looking knife now that we have. Um, so now we have the basic shape of the, of the knife done. Now we'll go ahead and add some more detail to add the grip to the model and to uh, prepare to add the crease here. So for adding more detail, we'll we'll go to uh, the uh, the board. Then um, what we're going to do is subdivide uh, T-spine spaces. And there's, there's two different options when subdividing. You can do the simple option, option or the exact option. We want the exact option um, because uh, we've spent so long getting the model looking how we want it. We don't want it to warp. So with this, um, when we uh, do it in exact, then it, it will disable symmetry, but that's OK. And um, if we toggle back to smooth mode, you can see that the surface actually has not changed. It's just added some more detail. Um, we'll go ahead and add, add some more detail again just here where the crease is because we want to have some fine control over that crease. Again, you can, you can subdivide both in smooth mode or, or home or box mode. So now we've added more detail there and you can see the surface didn't change. Um, so now with this added detail here, we'll go ahead and add the, uh, add the grip. Um, first, what we'll do is we'll extrude inward so there's a place for the grip on this model. So I'll go ahead and switch back to uh, box mode and just select uh, these faces. And uh, I'll extrude them. So let's hit the extrude command. And um, after I extrude, now I'd like to move them all inwards along the normal so I can change uh, my manipulator. There's some different manipulator drag modes. And now I'll go to the UVN mode. And by just dragging this blue manipulator, uh, you can see that this, this will extrude inwards along the normal. And um, you can see when, when it's extruded, and there's, this, there's this row of faces that's added. So I can extrude that just freehand, or I can undo that. And by clicking, <coughs> hovering and clicking on that manipulator, I can enter an exact distance. So I'll, I'll move this in uh, negative, one, negative 0.1 units. And you can see how it will move it in exactly that distance. Now let's go back to the smooth mode and see how our model's looking. Um, after that extrusion, you can see how it's changed the shape of the model, but it's kind of a washed out extrusion. What we'd like is really a little bit tighter control there. Um, so we'll undo this. And just like we uh, did before when we wanted more detail, the way to get a tighter, um, some tighter curvature is just by adding more control points. 
So we'll go to uh, edge mode and select uh, one of these edges. Then we have some, some paint selection tools in T-Splines that help uh, you select a lot of things quickly. So there's this edge ring command that will select all of these uh, edges in this whole edge ring across that whole extrusion. Um, we can use that the same insert edge command that we used earlier to add some more details. So I'm right clicking here. And um, I can freehand by just inserting detail wherever, or I can type in an exact percentage. So I'll just type in 0.9. And so now there's some detail added here. And now when we go back to smooth mode, uh, you can see how that's, that's some tighter, that's a tighter uh, curvature there where we have the uh, outline for the grip. Um, so now the main part of the, of the knife is ready for the grip. Now we need to make the grip itself. And the fastest way to do that will be to uh, go back to mesh mode. And Go to face mode. Let's see. And um, select these faces. Go ahead and hide the manipulator. And uh, with these faces selected, we will use the uh, duplicate faces command just by right clicking on this icon. It will duplicate all these faces. Now, to see what we have going on, we'll go ahead and hide the main <coughs> knife. And so you can see we've just duplicated this part of the knife where we'll have the grip. Uh, this is the T-spine surface now. We can go to, go to smooth mode to, to see how that will look. So if we want to add, turn this into a volume and add some thickness, um, then we can uh, thicken this. And we'll just use the T-spine's thicken command. Click on here, and we can, we can freehand the thickness, or we can, again, type an exact distance. So we'll type in 0 0.1, since that's how you, deep we have made the extrusion. Yeah. And um, get the get the right direction. Is it on. your? And um, so now we can again toggle back to smooth mode to see how the uh, how that's looking. Um, we probably want this to to be a little bit fatter here, so we can add some more detail. So we'll we'll do that. So we'll go back to our same trick of uh, grabbing an edge. Um, selecting the edge ring, and then doing the insert edge command. And again, we can either, this time we'll go ahead and freehand, inserting that, so if not there, and then just hit the space bar and repeat the command and freehand that there. Then hit smooth toggle, and uh, you can see how there we have the, uh, this turned into a, a solid. It's still editable. We can still use the manipulator to move any of this parts, but that's a solid now. So now I'll go ahead and unhide the main part of the knife. Um, switch that over to um, switch this over to smooth mode, and uh, you can see here's what the knife is looking like. So there's the there's the grip. There's the main part of the knife. And the last thing to do is to add a crease here along the blade. And with with these points, we can add perfectly sharp creases that are C0 that blend into the rest of the surface. So we'll just use the uh, crease command. And uh, I think I'd like to go to, to the uh, box mode so I can more easily see where my isoparms are. Go back to crease and just select the uh, edges that I want to have creased. Um, so I'm just selecting them all here on the, on the bottom of the knife. <coughs> And go ahead and hit enter. And we'll go back to smooth mode to see what that crease looks like. And uh, you can see, again, it's perfectly sharp, and it will just die out into being perfectly smooth here in this part of the knife. Um, you can still, even with that crease, you can move any part of the T-spine surface. We can, we can move uh, edges. Um, to change that, move control points. And at this point, um, you can render the model. You can export it to NURBS. Let's we'll show what that export looks like. Um, I'm just hitting es escape to leave exit mode. And um, converting T-spine to NURBS, you just right click on this convert button and click on the T-spine surfaces, hit enter. And then um, 
We'll just uh, show the uh, show without the certain isosceles curve. So you can see that when T spines are converted to nerves, the shape of the T spine does not change at all. It just splits the T spine out into these nerves patches because the nerves have to be rectangular. Um, so that's how to uh, to model a knife and T spines using the the box modeling method. Um, so uh, let's see. I I don't know if there's any questions at all that we need to answer before we move on to uh, V-Ray. So let's see. Tom, are there any questions that you have not answered yet? Let's see. Um, I'm just looking through the through the questions. Um, Roy is asking, how correctly will the surfaces of these parts touch? Um, so, Juan, do you want to go ahead and talk to that? Are, are you going mind lock? So, yeah. so the question is, how correctly will the surfaces of these two parts touch? Uh, well, it's going to depend on how many control points uh, you put. If you want to perfectly, perfectly touch, touch each other, you have to insert more control points there, but uh, they are perfectly touched. In this case, we, this model is uh, it's just a rough for visualization, but you can make, make them much perfectly. Okay. Yeah, so as one was saying, the answer is that depending on how many control points there, you can get it to within any, any accuracy. So if we had some more control points, um, we could get these tight with that, with that, within the tolerance that we want. Um, let's see some more. Let's see some more questions. At the uh, five star points, will the continuity of the surface curvature be uninterrupted? That's a great question. So here's um, these are what we call star points. I'll, I'll go back to T spines. This is here we're in nerves. We'll go back to T spines before we converted it to nerves. Um, here at the star points, um, the surface is is G1 smooth. So every, everywhere else, even at these T points, the T spine is C2 smooth, and here at the star points, it's G1. Um, so that's good enough for it, for the surface to be offset. Um, we can go ahead and shine some zebra on here um, to show how the surface smooths is there. Um, but there's there, you can see the star points there, and there's there's how the zebra is looking. Um, let's see, some more questions. Which is the toolbar on the right panel? Um, let's see, I don't know if I quite understand that question. Um, do we have to give layers before moving to rendering? We'll let, we'll let uh, Fernando talk about that. Um, will O-snaps work with T-splines? while moving the vertices. Um, yeah, O-snaps will work, so you can um, snap a T-spine vertex to uh, go ahead and turn on O-snaps. Um, let's see, yeah, exit zebra. And um, so here's a T-spine vertex. We can go ahead and move that. You can see that it's, um, I'll turn on point snap, and it will, will snap to the control points. Um, let's see other, the, okay, someone didn't, didn't understand the difference between the arrow, um, for the spot of the manipulator, and I, I hope, Ren, um, so with, with the T-spines manipulator, there's two ways of using it, um, when you're in the arrow, one is just freehand, so you can mouse over it and move, and you can just kind of freehand it. And then the other way is if you actually click and release, at that point you can enter in an exact distance. So we can enter in like uh, like two units, and it will move those control points exactly two units. So that's the two different ways of using the manipulator. Um, so a question back when we were deleting edges, is it simple to bring those edges back if we delete edges? Um, I think that may have been answered later. We can we can just insert edges using the insert edge command. We can also use the insert point command. That's another way of inserting points. So um, if we wanted to add some edges here, we could just uh, click there, um, bring the edge up there, hit enter, and that's another way of 
of adding edges to the model. Um, and uh, okay, looks like those are the questions. We can we'll go ahead and answer all these questions as well as in an email that we'll send out. But we'll go ahead and turn the mic over to. Um, to for, okay, oh, I guess one more question: Will the project, will the presentation be available later online? I guess it will be. Um, and uh, another question that came in: Can the nerves be converted back to T-spline? See after we've saved the project without using the undo. Um, we'll go ahead and show how that works. Um, go ahead and undo the last couple of steps. When we convert this to a nerves. Um, Here's, you can see it's, it's a whole bunch of rectangular nerves, and we can go ahead and ex explode that to see how the uh, it's just a the ner just a whole bunch of smaller rectangular nerves. We can convert each of these nerves back to T splines. So here's the rectangular nerves. I'll just click this to convert that back to T spline, and you can see the conversion doesn't change, but the problem is all of these surfaces are um, they're all separate. So you can convert all these separate surfaces back to T splines. Um, and then you can merge them together inside of T-spines, but it's, that's kind of a hassle. So going, going from NURBS to T-spines after you've gone from T-spines to NURBS can be done, but it, but it is a bit of a hassle. Um, General, it's, it's probably a good idea just to save the T-spline, because when you save the T-spline, it also saves the NURBS. So if you give a file to someone that doesn't have the T-spline's plugin, it'll just open up as a NURBS, and a Rhino will be able to work with it. Okay, yeah, thanks for that, Tom. Um, okay, we'll go ahead and turn... Um, oh, okay, so someone clarified this. Yeah, this is the tool, this is the T-Spines toolbar. That's what this is, this is the T-Spines Rhino toolbar. That was a question. Um, okay, and then there's one final question. Do we have history to keep every move, like Photoshop? Do you, Tom, do you understand that question? We, uh, we don't work with the, um, the Rhino's record history, uh, like at the bottom um, of the Rhino window there. Uh, and what we do is we just work with the Rhino's undo mechanism for undoing individual, you know, popping them off the undo stack. Okay. Um, okay, well, we'll go ahead and turn it over to Fernando, and if there's more questions that come in, we answer those in an email later. So go ahead, Fernando. Okay, thank you, Matt. Can you spend a few seconds to change uh, the screen? So everybody can see my screen right now? Damien, can you see my screen? I'm just getting a splash page right now. I think okay. uh, I can see it. Okay. Um, Okay. I just got it, Fernando. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I have some, uh, the, the same knife of Matt modeling, modeling in the, the T-Spine presentation. And also I have uh, some wood plate there that Juan uh, modeling for me. So thank you, Juan. Uh, also, this toolbar here is a T-Spine toolbar as well. So you can change the the toolbar. I don't know, probably not having. You can change to have a the test, the toolbar with the test, and just the the toolbar without the test. So I have the toolbar without the test. Um, so uh, let's start make a render. Just with the, our default setting. I have two cameras. I would prefer to render this. This camera here. Uh, let's make a render with the with our default um, setting. I just change uh, the the dimension of the viewer frame buffer to having a to match our view. But this is a render that you get with our default setting. And we are going to create a, a few materials because the our render. Should look like this guy, this guy here. So I will create a 
dark wood material, light wood material. We need the plastic for the handle and the steel, brush steel for the uh, blade, and also another kind of steel for the for the this uh, little sharp edge here. So let's start apply, create a, the wood material. Uh, let's start to create a, the, the environment. Right now, I will open the V-Ray option here in this uh, the second um, button. Um, I'm going to use uh, SGRI to illuminate my, my model. So in the environment, we have two main options. One is the GI Skylight. Um, it's about how illuminate your scene and the background is about how do you what you see on the on the background. So I'm going to select the GI M and select the bitmap in type. Um, I'm gonna select the an HGRI to illuminate my, my image. So I have two HGRI here that you can download uh, on the Aversis uh, homepage. Those HGRIs are very common. So I will try to keep the the render part, the, the render uh, bar, as low as um, basis as possible. So I have two different SGRI, one a blur for the GI, and one very sharp for the for the background. So I'm gonna use the blurry blurry one for my uh, GI. I don't need too much uh, detail to illuminate my scene, just the area where the where the light um, are. Also, the HGRI are um, images that contain light information. So if I click the preview with the texture options, I can see that my whole HGRI, I'm using an HGRI called uh, middle ball HGRI. It's because it's like uh, taking a picture to a middle ball. So I have, to, I have to change my UVW to environment in order to use the this HGRI to wrap around the around my scene. Uh, in, in the mapping type, I will use mirror ball because my HGRI type is mirror ball. So I select mirror ball and I click preview. Now you're gonna see the another uh, preview there. I'm going to apply and we create another render test. I disable my my uh, calculation. I'm sorry. I'm I am using a DR spanner. That's why you see a bunch of square there. It's because in my system, I'm using a DR spanner in order to speed up my my render because we don't have uh, too much time for for this section. So I, I'm trying to to use more than one computer to to render. And this is the illumination that I get with the SGRI. So you can see more contracts here, the shadow here, and this is very good to illuminate your model. Uh, let's apply some, create some material. The first thing is, uh, for the metal, I've downloaded my uh, steel brush through our, through our, our web page. So you want, if you want to download some material, go to um, software, download, and then in material here, you can download uh, material. And I'm using um, in the metal for the blade. I'm using brush material, brush metal. This guy here, brush stainless steel metal. This is the material that I use for for the blade. Okay, if you want to create a if you want to use the same material that, that I use, you also download from, from our web page. Okay, first thing I will I will create a, a wood material. So right click in the scene material, select add material and be ray material. Change the name to bamboo dark. Um in the diffuse I will select a bitmap that match my my bamboo texture. So select big mat in the type and then click in the small M in the big mat and select the bamboo texture. I have one of one here, bamboo dark. So I'm gonna use this one. 
if you select preview you can see the, the material in the preview windows select apply and also if you if, if you click update preview you can see the the material in our material preview there I just want to click right click and apply the material to the object now you can see how the material is already applied to the object I have uh, one mapping texture a texture mapping enabled in this uh, in this bamboo table because I want to specify the location of my bamboo so this is the mapping widget so I create a I already have the, the texture mapping enabled with some um, scale and some uh, uh, position so you can move the the mapping widget and change the, the orientation, rotate the mapping widget and you can rotate the the orientation of the texture. So let's go back to my original one. So it's this guy here and this is my my mapping. So I want I want to create some kind of reflections in this uh, material. So I will go back to my material editor. This is the first icon in the V-Ray uh, toolbar. And then right click on the reflections and select add uh, reflections. Our material system is a, is a layer system. So the layer have a position and those positions are very important right now because in order to see through the layer you have to apply some kind of transparency. It's not, right now my reflection layer is like a, a coating, a clear coat over the my texture so I don't need uh, any any transparency there. But I want to, to create a, if you click preview, now you can see some kind of reflections in my, in my material. But I don't want a perfect reflection, I, I, I want a kind of uh, blurry reflections so I will add highlight glossiness and reflection glossiness in my material in order to blur a little bit uh, the reflections. So I'm going to use, I'm going to use uh, 85 in both um, options in order to blur a little bit the reflections. And I will make a, another uh, render test. Now you can see my my material already applied. Uh, Fernando. Yep. Uh, I think you forgot to uh, map the background as well. Yes, um, I will uh, map the background after after the created material. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Yes, for, yes. I, I'm not. I forgot to to apply that. Um, then. Uh, I will create uh, the light material. But you can see it right now a, a kind of reflection here. But thanks, Damien. I forgot to apply the material, but I want to see the the render without reflection, without the environment, and with the environment in order to show the to show you the the difference between the the SGRI in the background and uh, the render without SGRI or without nothing to reflect. It. Right now, because I don't have any reflections image in my background my background is completely black if you turn my if I turn my render in this way and I make another render you will gonna see the, the black background in order to create a see my background is completely black that's why I don't have any object to reflect just a little bit in the in this area here and the floor in the, in the work. Okay, in order to create the, um, I, I just want to add a little bit uh, bomb to the to the wood in order to create some dip in the wood. So I'm going to use uh, the bitmap, select in the M, and apply the bitmap for my bump. I'm going to, I'm going to use the same version of the bitmap but in the in, um, in gray scale color. Select open and I want to 
decrease the bump size to 0 0.005. I don't want a very hard bump there, just a, a little bit. Um, in order to create the other bamboo color, the bamboo light, the light bamboo, I will duplicate the bamboo dark, rename the, the material, put light, and change the, the diffuse mapping, because right now it's, it's the dark one, um, in order to use the, the light one. Click apply, and everything will be the same. Right click in the material, and apply material to objects, and now you can see my other material there. As I said before, I already have a, a, a decal, a mapping, a texture mapping there with the correct position, but you can you can move, rotate, and whatever you want in order to fit your, your desired scale or something. Okay. So I make a render right now with this material. You're gonna see the 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 word. Okay, because I download the the brush material, I just want to apply it to the to the model, right? Um, select the brush material, right click, and apply it to the model. I make a small modification in this material because I want to see the the texture mapping here in my viewport. So I apply, I create a two layer and apply the with the same color and apply the texture that I'm gonna use for the for the uh, mapping in the diffuse um, layer in order to see the mapping in the in the viewport but I, I put this layer completely transparency in order to don't see the, the mapping, to not see the mapping in the, in the final render. So I don't want this pattern in the final render. I just want this pattern in my reflection here to get the correct, uh, the correct uh, color or the correct uh, effect. But I'm not, going to, I'm not going to explain the brush material because you can download from our web page. In order to create the, the material for the blade, I just duplicate the steel brush material and change the color kind of uh, lighter in order to get the, this color uh, lighter than the blade uh, uh, color. So I'm going to apply this brush material to the edge. And the last material that I want to create is the, the rubber material for the for the handle. Double click in the add material and select add bitray material. Change the name to rubber. And in the diffuse color, I want to use a dark color, kind of uh, foreign, something like that. Also, I want to kind of reflections in the in the handle. I'm going to apply the material right now. So I have to create a reflection layer. Right click and add reflection layer. And now I can see the my layer. Because I don't want a uh, completely sharp reflections in the rubber uh, material neither. So I decrease the, the highlight glossiness and the reflection glossiness kind of 0.7, something like that, 0.7 in order to blur a little bit uh, the reflection. Also, I like uh, to apply a kind of filter in order to tint the reflections, get some color to the reflections. Uh, I want to apply the uh, one color, decrease the, the color to something like like that. One, not by, to 125, something like that. Apply. Um, the, the filter options will tint a little bit the, the my reflections in the in the handle. Also, I will apply the bump map, but in this time, I will use a noise one of procedural uh, type that we haven't. 
we use a noise uh, bomb here and in order to decrease the, the size of the noise I will use point of one in the size of the noise you can see how my noise is, is very small right now and in order to reduce the bomb I will reduce and multiply here to one point one oh point oh one two so I, I will I will uh, shoot another render you see my reflection right now I don't have nothing in my background so that's why my reflection is completely black there um, uh, to fill in my material I have to create the floor material or the granite material create material change the name granite and I will apply the material to my floor apply in my diffuse color again select uh, a bitmap for the for the floor Select the granite one. Now you can see my granite texture in my in my viewport. But I want uh, that uh, my granite material will be reflective, so I have to add the reflection layer again. And I want uh, to apply some bump here in the in the in the granite, so I select the bump and. Select the bit map and select the bomb map. The same version but the dark and um, grayscale color. And I will reduce the multiplier in order to uh, having a small bump to 0 0.005. And select apply. And this is the preview of my material. Also, I don't want that my granite material will be a uh, very reflective or sharp or flat reflective or shiny, very shiny so I, I want to apply some blur there using the, the highlight glossiness and reflection glossiness to 0.85 and now I believe I have all my material there I'm gonna uh, click render again to see my, my material Now you can see all my material already applied, but I don't have any cool reflection here because my background is black. So I want to use a, a, the same as your right version in my environment. Same thing, environment, a middle bulb, and then apply the same uh, as your right, but a sharp version. Now you can see the 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 HBRI where I have to change the type to middle ball. Now you can see the the person that take the picture here in the environment because it's middle ball because this guy take a picture to the to a middle ball in order to get the environment. So let's apply and make a render again. I'm going to stop the, the calculation here. Because I want uh, you see the, the final render, the difference between both. This is rendering, but I hide the, the calculation right now in order that you can appreciate the change when you have something to, to reflect. Now you can see the reflection is very nice in my wood also in my floor and in my knife but it's very hard to get the, the desired uh, contrast just with the HDRI so uh, we recommend use the uh, HDRI in combination with other light so I create a new uh, another rectangular light have the rectangular light in the, in the light layer 
So I create another rectangular light in this area in order to get more contrast in the in this area, in the handle area. So that's why I place the, my light there. So I'm going to increase the, the size of the model. Something like that and make my final render. <coughs> it's still rendering. Oh, sorry. I know we need the log view options. There we go. Uh, this is pretty my my part in my in the in the V-ray um, rendering. So you can apply material. You can use an SURI for illuminate your scene. Also for the for the reflection, the same SURI version, and combine it with the with some rectangular light in order to get the, the desired contrast. Contrast again. This is the final render. You can see, you can see the contrast in the in the handle and in the blade and the different material between uh, the blade and the edge here. So this is the the final the final render. Uh, also, I, I appreciate for being here. And Damien, can you say something? Um, I don't know if there are any questions, uh, Fernando. Uh, I can't see the questions over here on my screen. So, are, are there any uh, about the uh, beer specific? Uh, let me let me let me see the question. How many solution computer are you using for the rendering? I think we are, I'm using ten computer with eight core, so eighty core plus my two core. Is a subscription required to access the material library on the website? I mean. Um, you, you will have to log into the uh, website. Uh, registering at uh, ASTBiz.com is free. Uh, and then once you do that, you can download all the materials and uh, and viz ops and things like that. Okay, um, I have a question here. Another, my, another one. Which units does BUM use? The BUM mapping? Uh, BUM mapping references uh, whichever is your scene units. So, if you're modeling in millimeters, uh, for instance, you probably won't need as small of a bump map uh, as Fernando is using. Um, Fernando, I believe, uh, modeling in inches, or at least is seen as in inches. Um, yes. Uh, and so typically that's uh, a much lower bump map that's needed. Um, bump maps are not exactly a, uh, a sort of real world 100% value. Um, they're just kind of a reference, so um, it, it's with, with a smaller scene unit, you won't have to decrease uh, the intensity of the bump map uh, nearly as much. Okay, the the setting that I, that I was using for the for the uh, small render as are pretty the, the the same setting of the our default setting. Um, the only difference is in the minimum and maximum rate for the map. I'm using minus four and minus two uh, for the for the test. Okay, let me see if I uh, have no other questions. He said, "Can you tell me the best web resource for Bitbay material, free and pay? Are there any dedicated a site similar to www.bitbay.com?" Um, Damien, do you wanna do you have do you want to answer the question? Um, if we know, uh, well, we, we um we just got our uh, material site back up. Uh, so if you haven't checked ASTubes uh, dot com in a little while, uh, go back and check a number of the materials that we have there. Um, also, there are a few other online resources. Um, one is from. Uh, 
one of our users, um, but I don't have them right in front of me. So um, we can send uh, we can send those in an email. Um, there are about uh, three or four uh, different material websites out there that are good resources. Okay. Uh, how certain you use for the final render? How do how to eat the super fine pixel? Okay, I have the this toolbar uh, in my left. This is a new version for of uh, Visual Express, but it's pretty the same um, setting of the old Visual Express toolbar. Um, if you send me an email, I can send you this toolbar to your personal email. I can post this email, this uh, toolbar in the in the web because uh, this toolbar uh, was made by by me and also by um, was made by um, Hive. Um, he take our idea of uh, Bitray Express and customize uh, this uh, Bitray Express toolbar. Um, so I can send you the toolbar if you um, write me an email to F. Try to put in the chat my email is F P Drogo at asgvis.com. I put my email in the chat. Um, um, a question about this word, this word, uh, rendering, Damien. I see you. I see you use uh, send to each node. I have problem with the send to share folder. Can you elaborate? I don't know if I understand um, the question. I've seen you use a send to each node. I have problem with this with send to share folder. Can you elaborate? This is a question. Um, there are there are three different modes that are that are sort of used um, with assets when using the uh, distributed rendering. Um, without sort of any of the asset collection on, um, V-Ray will assume that all of the, the files are in the same location on each machine. Uh, most of the time that's not the case. Um, so the easiest option is uh, the send to each node, which will send all of the uh, images and uh, any sort of saved light caches that you may have uh, to each node uh, each time uh, that you press render. Uh, when you have shared to, you send a shared folder, V-Ray will m copy all the assets to that folder um, and look there for any uh, images or maps that you may have. And so it's important that that shared folder is, um, is visible to all the machines that you would use in the rendering. Um, because if it's not visible to any of those machines, it won't um, it won't actually um, be able to see them, so it'll assume that they're lost and then uh, render odd or off moments. Okay, Damien, I have another question here. Uh, Say, uh, in large architecture and mobile, I'm a regular uh, experiencing crash of Rhino and Bitrate. The program jam, um, the RAM, and the, and then it crash. Is this, can you read the first part of the question again? Yes. In large architectural model, I am regularly experiencing a crash of Rhino and V-Ray. The program jam the RAM, and then mm -hmm. it's crash. Okay. Uh, with large scenes, you have to be uh, pretty careful uh, about how you're, um, how you're modeling and what you have available. Um, so typically... Um, yeah, that, that first question in our, in our frequently asked questions is uh, a really important one, um, especially within Rhino, uh, because you can have a very simple, uh, simple nerve surface, yet a very, very dense mesh. And so a lot of the times, uh, reducing the mesh settings for uh, the scene helps quite a bit. Um, there are also a few other, uh, a few other tips. Um, you can actually pre-mesh uh, the scene and so you can have a copy of the scene with just the mesh information. Um, this makes it a little bit easier, uh, or frees up a little bit of room uh, memory-wise. Uh, you can also decrease the size of your textures um, uh, for ones that don't need to be uh, very large. 
Um, yeah, so I have a question here. Uh, which is the size of my text? My text is uh, 1,000 by, by 1,000. 1,000 by 1,000 of the texture size. Um, I have another question about this blue icon here. This blue icon are my personal icon. Uh, so I have all the the Rhino command customizing this in this icon. All my my line are here, my curve are there, all my curve tools here, curve on surface is here, surface, surface tool, I have all the have the toolbar um, attached to, to this uh, bar. So I can send you as well if you uh, send me an email. It is possible to get B-Ray for solid work, Damien? Um, Damien is our B uh, program manager. Also, he is a B-Ray expert and trainer. Damien? Uh, at the moment, um, there aren't any specific plans for B-Ray for SolidWorks. Um, I really, I mean, we don't really have any sort of uh, timetable for that right now. Um, so, no, no V-Ray for SolidWorks. Okay. Another question, Damien, is: uh, Rhino, in, uh, is there a limit of three gigabytes of RAM in Rhino in general? And if so, will that be fixed in Rhino Five? Uh, the memory limitations uh, with Rhino are, are they're not really due to Rhino; they're due to 32-bit uh, operating systems and you just get maximum amount of memory that they can handle. Um, right now, Rhino is a native 32-bit application, and so by default in your standard Windows um, installation, it will only be able to use 2 gigs. Um, there's something called a 3 gigabyte switch. Um, you can Google that if you want more information on it. Uh, it basically allows uh, a given program to use uh, 3 gigs. Um, you can run Rhino 4 on a 64-bit operating system, which will allow for about 4 gigs um, uh, of memory usage. With Rhino 5, they'll be re releasing a native 64-bit version. Um, and so once uh, we begin the development for Vue uh, for Rhino 2, we'll have uh, native 64-bit versions as well. Um, that will be able to take advantage of all the memory that you have in your system. Uh, but you'll have to be running um, a 64-bit operating system like uh, XP X64, Vista 64, or um, um, Windows 7 64-bit um, later down the line. Okay, so. I, okay thank you, Damien. I will ask um, two more. We are we're going to ask two more questions. Um, those additional toolbar are uh, lights toolbar. For light and this is for height the calculation. Well, uh, the main tool is is this guy here. This is a, uh, Omni Light, everything about light and direct light, just light. Um, Damien, one more question to, to finalize the, the webinar is uh, when we pray for Mac. When? Um, can you hear me, Damien? Uh, no, you dropped out there. Uh, okay, there are a question here. When we are on the Available. Uh, V-Ray for Mac. Uh, V-Ray for Mac for Rhino. V -ray for Rhino. Mac for the first time. Um, right now, um, we're working actually on uh, porting, uh, uh, getting a Mac version of V-Ray for SketchUp running. Um, so a lot of the issues of getting uh, just V-Ray to work on on, uh, on a Mac have already been sort of worked out. Um, we are waiting for uh, some information uh, from McNeil uh, about uh, developing specifically for um, specifically for uh, the iRhino, the you know, or Mac version of Rhino. Uh, so we'll still we're still kind of uh, waiting to see on that. Uh, but once uh, McNeil makes that available to uh, developers, well, it's certainly something that we're going to be able to take advantage of. Um, at the moment, uh, you know, Rhino for a Mac isn't, isn't even uh, a released product, so um, things are still changing, things are st still developing, uh, so it's hard to really kind of say exactly when and how that's going to work itself out. Okay, thank you. Um, I want to say thank you to Matt and Tom and Juan Santacono to share this webinar uh, with us.
I was very excited to keep this webinar together and appreciate, appreciate, I appreciate the, the opportunity to share this webinar with you guys. Thank you a lot. Uh, Matt, do you want to say something at the end? No, just thank you very much for attending and we will um, email everyone. We had a question about how this video and it will also be available on our websites. So. Yes, absolutely, yes. I will convert this video right now to Windows uh, uh, Media and put in the internet as soon as possible. Also, okay. you, you're Thank gonna you. have a, also, you're going to have a copy, a map, that you can put the video on your website too. Great. Okay, thank you guys. Uh, okay. Thank you for being here and attend the webinar. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.